Gastrointestinal tract diseases affect humans of all ages. The immune system has to fight disease-causing bacteria and viruses while coexisting with millions of microbes and tolerating food. When tolerance breaks down, food intolerances and inflammatory bowel disease, or IBD, can arise. Oxford University researchers are seeking better treatment for these disorders. The Paediatric IBD Bioresource Project at the Biomedical Research Centre works with hospitals across the UK to better understand IBD in children. Inflammatory bowel diseases are a group of chronic recurrent intestinal inflammation. This can affect the entire gastrointestinal tract. There are two main groups, Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis, and they can affect people at all ages. If children have inflammatory bowel disease, then it's called pediatric inflammatory bowel disease. So symptoms of IBD can include abdominal pain, diarrhea, weight loss. These can affect the growth um, of children, which is very, very important. Patients like uh, Lawrence help us to understand inflammatory bowel disease, and they are essential for our uh, investigations. So Lawrence has been diagnosed with uh, IBD since he was two years old. It started off with diarrhea. He was very lethargic and at the peak of his condition, he was anemic. Good morning. How are you, Lawrence? I'm good. One in five patients with inflammatory bowel disease are present during childhood. Can you remind me, how long have you been sort of as part of this um, study? How, how often did you come? It's been since 2022 now. We were approached by a very friendly research team and asked if we could participate. And as it turns out, the trial was uh, uh, in his early days and uh, Lawrence uh, was uh, one of the first ones. The research part of it is a short bit. The samples are already going to follow up his condition and some of that will be towards the research. So there isn't any additional work. Every now and then we have to complete some forms which is very easy and very quick to complete. The PIBD Bioresource opened in the spring of 2022, firstly in Oxford and then it's rolled out to nine other sites across the country. Um, we're opening more sites and that will include Scotland as well. Patients who have IBD and are aged under 16, we ask them if they'd like to take part. They give us blood sample or a saliva sample, biopsy tissue and stool sample. We aim to recruit data and samples from 800 children across the UK and that will add to a pool of 5,000 participants. This will enable researchers in the future to apply to use the data and the samples to find out the causes and factors contributing to IBD and potential better treatments for the children who live with it. So the PIBD Bioresource is part of a large initiative called the IBD Bioresource, which is part of the NIHR Bioresource. We have identified a number of genetic uh, variants that can impact not only on their disease susceptibility, but also on their response to treatment and the future course of the disease. It's important to involve children at an early stage because we need to be able to catch the disease at an early stage. Mapping all the environmental factors will help us understand more about the disease and potentially to find the cure. How is your, your tummy? Do you have any problems anymore? Not anymore. I'm feeling great. Taking part in this observational study at the University of Oxford and the astrocytes means you are extremely well observed by your clinical team. It does not involve extra visits. It's taken part in, as part of routine clinical care. It will allow us a better understanding for inf of inflammatory bowel disease and improve treatments. I feel really proud and lucky uh, to help these sick children. The Paediatric IBD Bioresource Project, coordinated in Oxford, involves a growing number of study sites and collaborators in the UK, including Cambridge, London, Birmingham, Southampton, Norwich, Bristol and Edinburgh. Paediatric research in Oxford has been supported by a number of funders, including the BRC, NIHR and SECRA, as well as several charities. We are most grateful to all parents, young people and patient representatives 
who participate and support our research.